right. Last, uh, last time, I think with the last like five or ten minutes of class, we talked about um, creating and showing data from a database table um, on an ASP page. But we did it pretty quickly, so I want to go over it again. And, and I'll essentially recreate the page that we had from last time. I do want to make a couple of points um, here. Uh, first of all, I created the database. <laughs> I created the database and I put it in a folder called App Data. And I know you're not seeing this. Let me turn on the projector. I was imagining it. You're imagining it. That is a security feature to put data stuff there. Because the web server by default won't allow anyone to access stuff in there. So don't put your images in that folder as well, thinking, oh, it's a, it's a data folder, I can put my images. No, because then the web server will refuse to serve it. All right? So uh, don't put uh, that in there. So I created it. I created it just anywhere on the desktop, then I moved it in there, all right, and um, ready, you know, um, ready to, to go. I'm going to delete default ASPX and recreate it. If, you got, if someone wants to get the lights or some of the lights, feel free to. So anything in app data will not ever be served. Will not be served, right. That's a good idea. All right. So file, new, <laughs> file, web form. I'll call it default again. Again, keep in mind that I am not um, going through the trouble of making a master page and all that. We assume that you have that part of it down. Um, but it would be a good idea to do that for your assignments. So add. Remember that there's two pieces to, to creating a, a web form that has um, the results of a web query on it. There's a data source, and then there is the visual aspect of it. All right. Now, in our case, we only want to show a list of things. Uh, we want to show all the clan. Oh, I'm sorry, all the leagues in our uh, in our uh, database. We have a league table, and we want to see a list of all of them. All right. And when you hear, you know, we we want to see a, a, a list or or a number of rows, and for each row, we want to see a certain number of columns, all the attributes in that table. You know, that's a table. All right. And so we're gonna we're gonna have a table on our page. But we're going to use the ASP.NET control to create the table because we can take that grid view, which translates to an a, to a HTML table, and we can bind it to the data source. So we have our data source that supplies the data. We're going to have our visual aspect, which in this case is going to be a grid view, and it's going to merge together. We're going to bind them, and it's going to create then a table that contains the results of our database query. All right. The grid view isn't the only visual thing that we'll do. Uh, later on, probably today, we will bind our um, we will bind uh, a, a drop down to a um, to a data source. All right, so that you can choose maybe what what uh, sport you're interested in, for example, and then show all the leagues that belong to that sport. All right, but first things first. So, I'm going to go here and I am going to, I'm also going to do, I'm also going to undo what I did last time as far as creating a connection string. I'm going to delete the connection string because I want to do that again. Remember, this is something you only need to do once, typically. All right, you're only going to have one. Typic, again, typically, you know, you should filter in your head anytime I say always or never, put the word almost in front of it. Almost always, almost never. All right? Typically, an application interacts with a database. However, an application could certainly interact with multiple databases, depending on the nature of the application and, and, and so on. So what we're going to consider is... is 
applications that interact with one database. So if you only have one database, you only need one connection, and you only need to make that once, all right, the first time. So we'll go through, we'll pretend that we didn't make one last time, and we'll make a connection this time, and then the rest of the database stuff that we do in this uh, application, we'll use the same connection for. All right, so I'm going to go under data and drag over SQL data source. All right. I'm going to be a good egg here, and I'm going to give it a good name. So I'm going to say DS leads, meaning that it's, it's a data source to contain the leads. All right. Now, this is going to this is going to contain my data that I'm pulling from the database. So this is the object that is going to contain the actual query and the results of the query. I have to wire that to the database. Because, again, keep in mind that there potentially could be a lot of databases out there. We have to say specifically what database this query is associated with. So I click here, and I click Configure Data Source. The first thing I'm asked is if I want to create a new connection or use an existing connection. All right. I deleted my connection all right, before, so I'm going to click and say I want a new connection. I stand corrected. I'm going to click the drop down and pick you know what? Did you ever uh, save the web config file? I probably didn't save the web config file. All right. Pretend you don't see that. It probably read in the web config file initially and it like has it cached. You'll pick the name of the database there. All right. Click next. Do you want to save the connection? Yes, you do. You only want to do this one time. As I said before, the nice thing about this is, is if you migrate your database from one platform to another, <clears throat> you only need to change the connection string. So today, our little village only has, you know, two leagues in it, and there's only, you know, 100 kids that are in it. So we're using a little access database to handle our summer league. Um, there's a massive influx of people into our community, and the access database can't handle it anymore, so we go to a SQL Server database. Well, we don't have to rewrite our application. We just change the one component that hooks this data source to the specific database, and that is the connection string. All right. Again, it's the whole wisdom of that component approach. All right. Instead of having everything tangled up in a mess, you have little pieces that do little things. And if I want to change one of the pieces, I can do that and knock on wood, I won't have to change anything else. All right. Now again, in practice, sometimes there's issues with that. But at least in theory, you should only need to change the connection string and you should be okay. So I'm going to save it. All right. Now I have a chance to put a query in. And because we have more time today, I'm going to go to create a custom SQL statement or stored procedure. All right. Last time, if you remember, I sort of took the shortcut and we just picked league, all right, from there. But I'm going to go in and I'm going to pick, um, I'm going to write my own SQL statement. So I go there. Next, I get a screen where I can open and, and type in my SQL statement. So I'm going to say, what do I want to see? I want to see the league ID and the league name and 
and the order by league name. I'm going to go next and I'm going to test it to make sure it didn't break. Okay, make sure I got it right. Let's look at the SQL statement. This is one of the simple kinds of SQL statement that you can have. It's a SQL statement to do a query. All queries in a relational database start with the word select. That means go out and get this data, pick this data, all right? The simplest selects that you can have involve a single table. In this case, the lead table. The general form is going to look like this. Select, then I'm going to have a list of columns. from table or list of tables. Now, I feel obligated as a teacher to say this. You don't type in the words list of columns in square brackets. I would not think that was necessary, but I've taught a couple of 121 classes recently, and the instructions say, Save the document as W2 last name first name dot DOCX. And you would not believe how many people I get files called W2 last name first name dot. Maybe they saw Animal House with the I state your name, you know, I state your name. Um, I will say, and, 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 and it takes everything in me not to give a sarcastic answer, but I've had people say, Am I supposed to put my name in there, or do I put the words last name and first name? And it's like I'm so tempted to come back with some smart aleck answer, but I always say, no, you put your name in there. That way it helps me keep straight whose assignment it is. You know what that means, though, is that they've lost points before because they put their name in place of last name and first name. That is, that, you know, that is entirely possible. I've had teachers. Uh, I've also had people ask me, like, what time is something is due? You know, if I say it's due Thursday, they're like, what time oh, Thursday? Yeah. It's like, I don't know, Thursday, you know? But again, you're absolutely right in that case. I know some teachers say it's due by 8, and you turn it 8 on 1, it's like, eh, sorry, there's a, bud. There's a, the new thing is everything's due. <clears throat> he teaches you, do you have time? It's 11.55 on Thursday. It's not 11.59 because for some reason, there's a huge difference between 11.55 and 11.59. Well, is that 11.59 before noon, or is that 11.59 before midnight? Like, 11.59 p.m. is 11.59 before midnight. And I know for many students that is an impact because then they look at the clock and say, oh, I need to start four minutes earlier on this assignment. Let me start 11.40. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, so I know. All right, getting back to SQL. Yeah, it's one of those kind of days, I think. Yeah. Getting back to SQL, this is a general form. Select, you have a list of columns from, then you have the list of tables. Or in our case, we're having one table. All right? Pretty much, and again, there's, there's always exceptions, pretty much it's about as simple as it would get. In this case, I'm saying select league ID, league name, from league, order by league name. After the list of tables, after the from clause, there is a series of other clauses that you can have. Clauses are parts of the select statement. And one of them is the order by clause. And that will put it in that sequence. If you don't specify the sequence, it will do it in ascending sequence. In other words, it will put the lowest thing first, then higher, 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 higher. Lower in terms of alphabetical would mean like closer to the A's. Higher would be closer to the Z's. So if I sorted a list of names, Anne would be first, uh, Betty would be second, Charlene would be third, 
Doris would be fourth, Eunice would be fifth, Fiona would be sixth. We'll see how far I could go thinking of names. All right, but it would do it in that order. If I want it in a different order, if I want it descending, that's why I type in D-E-S-C. And that's where it comes back to what I said last time. That's like a reserved word, and so I don't call one of your columns D-E-S-C. And that's a common one, because usually for description, you might think to abbreviate <coughs> D-E-S-C. So usually, you know, write out the full description, or make it D-E-S-C-R, or whatever. Okay. One shorthand that you can have is you can put a star, and that means select all the columns. That's a wild card. Yeah, it's a wild card. Now, if I don't specify an order by, what order do I get them in? Whatever it's in in the table. Okay. I'll buy that. Can you clarify that? Uh, whatever order they are in the database is the order you'll receive. Them. Okay, what order are they in the database? The order in which you put them in. Well, technically they'll be in ID. Okay. Ascend ascending. This is, this is a case of where you're both right and you're wrong. Okay? You're right in the sense that, yeah, that's how Access does it. You're wrong in the sense that you can't assume that. All right? A database table is in no particular sequence. So, yeah, Access returns the queries in key order, and probably a lot of databases would. But if you want it in a specific order, is there a problem? Okay, you guys both, like, turned your head. Yeah, there was some... I, there was, was a guy out there who literally had like like a handkerchief over his mouth. And it was he was Michael like Stryer. And he was that was the English teacher. And he was looked like he was sick. And I'm paranoid. Yeah, I was. Oh my goodness. It's down the hallway. Local man was shot for sneezing into his. Shooter states that he had Ebola. Oh my goodness. At any rate, if, a bowl of what? <laughs> if you want it in a certain sequence, you have to specify an order by. So most of the time, if not all the time, put an order by clause on it. That way you get it, you know for sure you're going to get it, and you won't run into any nasty little surprises like if you switch from Access to Oracle, Oracle does it in some other sequence. <coughs> all right? So, <coughs> that's the sequence. <laughs> all right. You know what? <laughs> it's a good idea to test it. All right, as I said before, that way you can uh, fix any problem uh, before you get any further. That's the idea of, you know, the, the, the problem that you have with components is if something goes wrong, you can never be 100% sure exactly where that problem is. All right, therefore it's good to test every little component at a time, you know. So, for example, if for whatever reason I didn't get my query to show up correctly, there could be a lot of problems. In general terms, it could be a problem with component A, could be a problem with component B, it could be a problem with the way component A and B are talking to each other. All right? So using two components, there's at least three possible places where things could go wrong. So the better that you can test each unit, and that's called unit testing, the better position you'll be in. So I'll go in and I'll finish this guy up. And I now have my SQL data source. By itself, though, that's not going to do anything because I haven't specified how I want to display that. This piece of data I could display a whole bunch of different ways. I have to decide how I want to display it. And in this case, I want to display a table. And the simplest kind of table is a grid view. And I can drag that over on the page. All right. And what I need to specify then is I need to specify the data source. So I click on that, and I pick DS Leagues. And that's what it looks like. All right. Now, I can run this. And I should get the data from my query. The computer is blazing fast. All right. 
So there I have it. About as bare bones as possible. All right. It's always a good idea, in my opinion, to view source to see what got created. And we can see here it created a table. It put a little bit of embedded style, which, as David can tell you, is, can cause some grief. All right. So that's the basics of it. Now, how, where do we go from there? Well, first of all, league ID and league name like that, well, you know, that's kind of goofy the way they're spelled because it was actually just showing the name of the database column. And sometimes the name of the database column can be difficult for people to understand. All right? Um, like a, a lay person looking. Liguid? What is that? Liguid? Liguid. Ligu, Ligunam? You know, what are those things? So we want to express these things in, in lay people's terms. All right? We want to make it understandable. So we can go and customize this. Now, where do you think we're going to make the change? Properties. The, the properties of what? Of the table. Of the table, right. Remember, there's two pieces to this. There's the data, and there's the way the data is presented. Any issue about changing the way it looks is going to be done in the table or the grid view. Any change as to what data we want to see Specifically, maybe we don't want to see all the leagues. Maybe we want to see just the softball leagues. Or maybe we want to see the leagues and the names of the sports associated with them instead of the ID of the sports. That is changing the data. So we would change the, the SQL data source. So I can go in here, click on this, and I can do auto format, which we're going to do, but... I'm going to do just to demonstrate, and then I'm going to take it off because this removes all the fun of it. You, you know, typically you probably want to write your own styling. I'm going to pick. What do I want as a style? Brown sugar. Brown sugar. In honor of Keith Richards, yeah. we'll, we'll pick the we'll run the Rolling Stone songs, Brown Sugar. There you go. Who's Keith Richards? <laughs> I can then go and I can edit the columns. And, in this, and I can pick the columns. In this case, I'm going to add it to give more descriptive names for the, I'm going to call this the lead number. And I'm going to call this the name. So I can change the header to be something that's going to make sense to the user instead of um, something that is internally stored in the database. Now you might say that I don't really need the lead number, right? We, we talked about this last time, how that is a generated number and it goes one, two, three, four. And if there's gaps in it, you know, uh, you know that there are gaps in it and, and whatever, and that could lead to confusion. I could actually remove that. I could still keep it in the data source because I might need that for something. All right, That will become important when we do updates and deletes because I'm going to need the league ID to do updates and deletes. But I don't necessarily want to show it. So I can have things in my query that I'm pulling that I don't really need to, to, to show to the user. So if I wanted to do that, I could just go and delete it. I'm not going to do that, but I could. I also can use this to rearrange it if I want to put the name first and the number second. There's other properties here that you can change and have a lot of fun associated with it. Is that that's not generating SQL statements and that's just that's just changing what data is being brought to it. No, this is saying the data that's being brought to it how are we how is the format of the display? Okay. So this is, because we're manipulating the, the, the grid view, the grid view is the UI piece. It's not the data piece. Right. The, the UI is a presentation layer. So therefore, any changes we make here, we're saying, hey, uh, 
you know, this is how we want to display it. So, for example, if I were to delete league number from this, all right, if I were to delete league number from this, the query would still return the league number, all right, and it would be available if I were going to do an update or a delete or whatever, all right. It just wouldn't display on the screen. Um, all right. Is it just hiding it like the CSS or something? Or? No, it just it just won't add it to the table. It will exist in the data source, but it won't exist in the in the uh, the grid okay. view. I have a couple other things here. Um, enable paging will allow us to specify like if if we were returning a big set of data, you know, like. Um, something where there were hundreds of entries. You know, we wouldn't necessarily want a grid view that showed 100 entries. You know, if we were returning all the players that were in the city and there were, you know, a few hundred kids registered for the league, we wouldn't necessarily want a query that would show every player. We might want to show 10 players at a time and then be able to click through like that. That's what enable paging is. All right? Uh, We'll de I promised to, uh, to demonstrate that before the end of the semester. Remind me if I forget, but with two rows in the database, paging isn't going to be, or with three rows, paging isn't going to be particularly effective <laughs> in this example. One thing that is nice is sorting. If I enable sorting then, the header becomes clickable and I can uh, choose to sort and change the sort that the, the data source by default sorted as. So, for example, I, I chose to sort this by league name, but maybe I would want to click on it and sort it in league number. All right? Or later on, if I have sports or whatever, I might, I might choose to sort it by, by that. But that's on the website itself, right? Yes, that is, on, that is on the GUI. This is all presentation layer. Enable selection allows me to click on a row and select it if I want to then do something with it, if I want to write code to do something with it. Tem edit templates will become important later on. Let me just introduce that concept to you. By default, there's certain default behavior about a grid view. Grid view displays text boxes, or labels rather. You know, this plain text for all the fields. And if I go into edit mode, which I can't do in this, in this particular case because I didn't code an insert, update, or delete statement, it will bring in in a, into an editable text box. If I want something else, if I want a drop down, or I want to show the data in some other way, or if I wanted to say, let's say I had a person's name, normally that would be two columns, first name and last name. If I wanted to change that, so I had one column that was the full name, first name, middle initial, or first name, last name, middle initial, then I could create a template column. So we'll see examples of this by the end of the term, but essentially, edit templates is where you want to customize and change the default behavior of this grid view. And that's, that's a nice feature of this because it does basic stuff pretty well, pretty straightforward. In this case, hey, labels is fine. Just plain text is fine to show the name of the league and the number of the league. But there will be cases where we want to show something else and we want to customize it. So grid view, quick and dirty, gives you a table with text in it. If you want to change that, then you can go into template mode and you can change the, the template for, um, for that particular column and have it display some other way. So now let's look at this. And sure enough, there we go. And we can sort either by league number or by league name. If we had more fields, we could, chose, we could choose them to be sortable if we wanted to. Now, 
Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to remove the auto formatting. Because that's no fun at all. So now we're back to writing our own style code. As I mentioned before, it's critical when you're writing your own style code to actually like look at the HTML that gets generated. That's your hook, if you will. All right. So I can look at the, uh, the, the HTML that gets generated, and I can see that this data is a table. Its ID is whatever ID I gave to the grid view, and in this case it's grid view 1. And the rest of it's from there. So, what can I do? Well, I can do this any number of different ways. I'm going to go and do the more HTML5-ish kind of solution. I'm going to remove the div tags. I'm going to change the ID of this from grid view 1 to oops, GV leagues. I'm going to put an article here. An article being a better way to represent this than a div. All right. Then we're going to make my CSS file. New file. style rules I want. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say article table. Now what does that mean? Any table within an article tag. I'm going to make the width 70%. Border pixel solid red I could then do article table th and make the background pound sign That definitely is going to be a generational thing. Who calls that a hashtag? Who calls that a pound sign? Sixteen-year-old girls all over the world stole it from us. It's okay. No offense to the sixteen-year-old girls. Okay. So now let me go and associate that with the, the page.
and so we could do whatever we wanted to um, style-wise to it simply by knowing the HTML that gets generated. That's in my mind. That's that's a key consideration um, for this. All right. Questions about this? So, what are the pluses and minuses between styling the CSS and ASP. The oh. ASP stuff is at the server? No, they both they both ultimately will generate CSS code. In my mind, the, the, the question is, is what's the difference, what's the pluses or minuses of, of styling something by writing your own CSS code versus like picking the um, ASP.NET properties? Um, Yeah. Uh, first of all, like for example, with that auto formatting, that was easy, right? It, it, it's the case of anytime you ask any, uh, you know, someone to do something for you, right? It's easy. It's easy for me to say, hey, go to the store and, and get some orange juice, all right? What's the downside of that? Well, they might not get the kind of orange juice I like. They may get with pulp instead of no pulp or whatever, all right? So the problem is that you lose a little bit of control when you ask someone else to do something for you. So by using that automatic formatting, you lose a little bit of control. It's going to do the way it wants to do it, all right? But it's convenient. It's easy, you know? You have to decide, is that worth the trade-off? Now, here's where maintainability comes in now. Because if I had, let's say, a dozen pages, all with the same grid view, if I were to style that via ASP.NET on all those pages, well, if I decide my color scheme for the league changes or whatever, I'd have to go back and change all of them. All right? So that would be a downside as well. Now, there's things such as themes in uh, ASP.NET that we haven't talked about um, that kind of mitigates some of that, but that's sort of the basic choice of that. All right, here's the next thing I want to do to this. Are there any questions about this? So why'd you use an article tag and not a div tag? You couldn't do this. No, I, the only reason I use an article as opposed to the div is is uh, div is a generic container, right? And it was the only generic block tag container that existed in HTML4. So if I was writing a web page in HTML4, I would have a div for the navigation section, a div for the body of the for, for an article on the page, a div for the footer, a div for the header, and then I would have to differentiate between those by using an ID. Div ID equals nav. Div ID equals article. Div ID equals footer. HTML5 has added um, <coughs> has added a new set of top level block container tags, article, nav, header, and so on. That removes the need to do so much coding by ID, and and you can just go in and specify the the, the container itself because the containers are more specific. So. If you have a choice in doing it, this would have worked just as well if I would have used a div, all right? But the problem then would be is I could have a dozen divs on the page, each fulfilling a different role, and it would style all the tables in the page like that, which may or may not be a big deal. But the HTML5 tags are more precise and therefore uh, are, 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 are probably a little, little better to use. And it's good practice if, if, you, if you have not done HTML5 or you're a little shaky on it. Here's the next thing I want to do. Let me... <laughs> Let's say I want to do this. Let's say I don't want to show every league. That thing's got a cola. Pretty sure it's eating away at the chains right now. Right now I'm showing every league, which is fine. And again, we only have three leagues in our database, so it's not a huge deal. 
all right? We may want to, however, show, uh, allow the user to pick which sport and show just the league for, uh, for the, the sport that we've picked, all right? So what would our UI look like for that? If I wanted to allow the user to pick a sport and only show things for that sport. You need a drop down or something. That would show the sport. All right. And then this would be, well, aspects of it would be the same, aspects of it would change. Right now, we have a data source and we have a grid view for this. What would we need to add to the page to get this to work? We need to add the drop down. Would we need to add a different data source? I have one vote for no. <laughs> we would have to enter, make, uh, make it so sports is an option. Yeah. Okay. Will that involve picking a, or creating a new data source? The data source you have is just, just it's a, no, because you're pulling from, you're, you have access to the whole, we were just, we just wrote the SQL to take that lead, but you could just write a, another SQL statement. To I would say yes, you do. Okay. Are you saying yes because Alan said no? <laughs> Partially, but no, because if you bring in the data source, it looked to me like it can only handle a single SQL statement or at least a SQL statement for that specific data source. So you'd have to add another one in there if you want it to have its own SQL statement as far as data source goes. Just, just, write, just write C sharp. I, I think it would be, I think you probably could do it this way, but you'd have to write some C sharp to override previous statements and things along that line. Hold an if statement. If, if drop down equals this, run the SQL statement. If, if else, run the SQL statement. But the grid view is a table. The grid view translates view. into a table. But the drop down isn't, so you don't really need a data source. You, you have the data source, you need the, the, the control. Okay. So we have a number of votes. <laughs> we've covered the gamut. <laughs> we, we've covered the gamut. Great. <laughs> let's, let's think about this, and this, this <clears throat> is what's useful to me sometimes. Sometimes it's useful to me to take off my programmer hat and to just think and just real-world descriptive terms, all right? And that will give me insight. If I was going to describe this in words, forget about SQL statements, if I was going to describe this in words, what would this be? A table of leagues. A list of leagues. If I was going to describe what's the contents of the drop down, what would that be? List of sports. List of sports. Is this the same as that? No. So it's a different data source. Oh, I was right. I was thinking of the list of people. Yeah, you would okay. I was too. Fair enough. I know. Uh, you just got it. So, we're going to have, in this case, and this is good to do when you have an assignment like this, is to, to sit down and, again, this is an aspect of design. A lot of times when people talk about design, again, they, they just really are focused on the visual aspect. But thinking through the problem and sort of taking inventory of what you need is a big aspect of design as well. In this case, remember, we're always going to have, for these database things, we're always going to have a source of data and we're going to have a visual aspect of it. All right. In this case, we had the grid view and a data source, and we got that working. We're adding the drop down. Okay, that we obviously need the visual for the drop down. Do we need another data source? Yes, because we're going to be showing different data in here than we were showing from here. All right. So, um, and again, the way I think of it is to think if I was going to describe the contents of that visual control, what data is going to populate that visual control, 
Does that match what data is going to populate the other one? This is a list of leagues, that's a list of sports. It's a different data source, different set of data. Now, we still, we, we now have a connection string, so we don't need another connection string, right? When I go and create this, I don't need another connection string because both of these data sources are ultimately coming from the same database, right? So I do not need a new connection string. I can use a connection string, the same connection string for both of these because I'm one database. Now, am I going to need to change this guy, this piece of it? Am I going to need to change that piece of it? As far as what do you mean? any aspect of it. Will I have to go and change any aspect of the data source or the grid view that shows a list of leagues. No. So it's visibility property. By the way, as you click it, it goes oh, so It's changing it somewhat. No, you need the no, no, sport ID right from the league table. All right. The sport ID is going to come into play in the league table. Our SQL statement didn't have the sport ID in it at all. All right. Let me ask you this, before and after, let's describe the, the data source. Before, what was the data source? List of all leagues. What's our data source after going to be? List of all leagues for selected sports. doesn't equal that. So we're going to have to change the data source to not pull all the leagues, but just, excuse me, pull the leagues for a specific sport. All right. So let's go and do this. All right. Let's go in and do this. Now that we have sort of a roadmap on how to get there, we can do a piece, a piece at a time. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the drop down piece. So I'm going to go and I'm going to drag on the page a drop-down list. All right. Am I going to go in here and edit the items of the drop-down list? Yes. That's how we did it before, right? Yeah. Am I going to do that way now? I think you're going to use the data source. Yeah, no. Because I'm not going to manually hard code the list of data items. <coughs> I want the list of data items to come from the database. So if I add a new sport, I don't have to go back and add it to this list. So I'm not going to manually select the items. I'm going to bind it to a data source. Okay? So let me go and create the data source. SQL data source. Let's go in and set some of the properties. I'll go and change the name of it to DS Sports. Right. Configure. What connection am I going to use? I'm going to use the existing connection. All right. I'm not going to click new connection. Why? Remember, connection relates to the pipeline of the database. One database means we only need one pipeline. So after we've created our first connection string, we never have to create another connection string again. Good deal. I click Next. Now I get to specify my select statement for sports. All right. And I'm going to go and type it in. What do you suppose the select statement is going to look like? I 
I'm going to select Sport ID and Sport Description from Sport. Order by Sport Description. I got an name. Did something wrong. Sport name, not sport description. <coughs> oh, that's not. Although I didn't think SQL is cap sensitive. It isn't. So I could have left it like that, but. <coughs> Alright, so there we go. So this part is correct. Question. Does this SQL statement need both the sort ID, I'm, I'm sorry, not sort ID, sport ID, and the sport name? Does it need both? Yes, I'm asking does it need both. I obviously picked both, so that kind of gives you a clue to the answer. Yes. No. Why does it need both of them? Well, that's why it has both of them. That's not why it needs both of them. Why do I need both the sport name and the sport ID? Let's say I did not include the sport name in here. What problem would occur? No one would know what sport. No one would have any idea what sport one and two is. So I could make a drop down where it said sport one and sport two, and it could work. The problem is, is who knows what sport one and sport two is? You know, don't look at the screen. Which is which? You don't have any idea. So that's why we need the sport name. We need the sport name to show to the user, hey, you're selecting baseball, you're selecting softball. Why do I need the sport ID? It makes the difference. Exactly. The exactly. Because the league table has a sport ID in it. So I'm going to need that sport ID to match up the value in the league table. So I need both of them. All right? I need something to display to the user, and I need something that's going to like be behind the scenes so that the program can understand it. And this is exactly what we do with drop-downs, right? When we talked about drop-downs in CISS 216, we talked about the drop-down. Each option has a description and it has a value. Why? The description is going to be something that the user is going to see and understand. The value is going to be something that behind the scenes the code is going to use. So, what I'm going to do, click finish, is I'm going to bind this to my data source. And I get two choices to make. The top one says, select the field to display in the drop-down list. Display in the drop-down list means what you're going to show the user, what's going to be displayed. Do we want the sport ID to be displayed? No. No. We want the sport name to be dis displayed. Select the data field for the value. Do we want that to be the sport ID? Yes. Because that's the code that, that, that's what the code is going to see. It's going to see the value. <coughs> so in general, when you do these, when you create drop downs like we're creating here, most of the time, but not, you know, nearly all of the time, the data field to display is something descriptive. Something that the user will look at and understand. The second field of the value of it is going to be probably the primary key to that table, right? Because remember, that's how we link stuff together. We link things together via the primary key of one table matches up to a column in another table. So almost always this is going to be the primary key of the table and it's going to be something descriptive. All right. <coughs> now, let's go. I'm going to create, I'm going to add a button on here. Uh, 
eventually we'll take that button out, but I'll put it in there for now. Now let's run it. Is this going to work the way that I want it to? No. No, no why not? No code that I Okay, that's button's not gonna do anything. Okay. Drop down. You can select what you want other, but it's not gonna change any. Exactly. Any See. Exactly. It will the drop down will appear correctly. It will show me the list of sports. The value of it should be the value of uh, you know, value of the primary key. But it's not going to change what we see in the grid view. Why? Because we haven't linked that drop down to the second data source, the, 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 the league data source. So let's run this though, just in the, in the name of doing a, a, beat, a bit at a time. Well, you want to be sure that, that the drop down works. Yeah, right? sure. Make sure everything's wired together correctly. So I go and look at this, and I see there's a the drop down. The drop down shows the two leagues. The button submits the page. The only problem is, is it doesn't really do anything with that. It's the 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 um, the, uh, the grid view still always shows the uh, all of the sports. Let's look at the source for this. Let's look at the HTML source for this. Here's my drop down. Option one, option two. The inner HTML of that option, the description associated with that option is the, the name from the database, the sport name. The value is the key. So the value, if I were to do test and a code behind or whatever, the value if I selected baseball would be 1. If I selected softball, it would be 2. All right. Now let's make the last thing work, the last piece of this work. What do you think I need to change? Do I need to change the data source or the grid view for the leagues? Data source. All right, we have a vote for data source. Do we have a sor uh, vote for grid view? Well, if you remember what I had up there, the data source is what changes, right? Because we're now, we now the description of the data that we want in our grid view is different. Instead of a list of all leagues, we want a list of just certain leagues, leagues that match a sport. So, I'm going to go in, I'm going to configure data source. Now, this is a select statement that we have as of now. What would I need to add to this to make it show only the baseball leagues? Remembering that the, the sport ID for baseball league is, for, for baseball is one. What do I need to add to this SQL statement to make it only show baseball leagues? A where, A where clause. All right. Where clauses are used to filter data. So I have the word where there. What do I have next? Where, uh, the, you said you wanted leak names or IDs? Sport. Uh, leak IDs. What I'm doing is I'm filtering out the leagues. I only want to select those leagues that match the sport. So where league ID matches sport ID. Is that a true statement? Uh, or where you need the primary key from one to match this. You need the primary key in one to match the foreign key in the other. Yeah. Let's look. Let's open up the database real quick. So yeah. 
How do I match up league with sport? Well, I want the sport ID. If I only wanted to see baseball, that would mean I want the sport ID to equal one. All right. If I wanted to see softball, I would want to see where it says the sport ID equals two. So let's go into here. And let's go and reconfigure that. <coughs> so, I want that to say sport. I want that to say sword, sword ID. I don't know. So, if I wanted baseball, this would be what my SQL statement would look like. Right? Problem is, I don't always want baseball. Sometimes I want softball. So if I want softball, it would be that. If there was a tennis, it would be that. Where is the value of the sport ID that I want going to come from? It's going to come from the drop down. So how do I code that in the SQL statement? I don't just yet. I put a question mark in there. Question mark means it's going to get supplied from somewhere at runtime. All right. So I'm going to change my statement to say select league ID, league name, from league, where sport ID equals, and then the question mark's a placeholder. Now in a future screen, we're going to say where that placeholder is getting filled from. So I'm going to go here and say where sport ID equals question mark. All right, just what I had there, except it's on one line instead of multiple lines. I click Next. Now I have to specify where that question mark is going to come from. What is going to fill in that question mark? And I have choices. All right, I have choices of where it's going to come from. It could come from a cookie. It could come from the query stream, could from, from a session variable, but in our case we want to come from a control on this page. Which control is it going to come from? Our drop down list. So now we've connected that SQL statement that had the placeholder in it. Where are we getting the value for that? We're getting it from the drop down. Alright. I click next. I should test it out. I test it out. Well, because this, this is testing the query as a unit, not incorporated with the whole page, I have to supply the value of the sport ID. And it shows me that. I guess I don't have any softball leagues. We'll have to go and make sure that's correct. All right. I now go and click finish. Let's go and let's change one of them to be a softball league. Yeah, all of them are baseball. Had me worried for a second there. Thought I was losing my touch. Should have known better. All right. Now let's go and run this. All right. Interesting thing there, right? What did it bring up initially now? It brought up only the baseball leagues. All right, which is what you'd expect it to do. All right? That might be okay. That might not be okay. Depending on how much data you're talking about. In our case, we only have a few leagues, so the fact that it defaulted and brought up baseball initially, that's, that's no big deal. If, however, we were like doing a search where we were listing hundreds of rows from the database, we might want to have a dummy selection on the top that says, please select sport, and don't retrieve any sport until I go and do that. We'll leave that for another day. All right? But just to show you that this does work, if I change it to softball and click search, it then brings up the one that I changed. If I change it back to baseball and search, 
it shows that. Now, one thing I might do to simplify this is I said I was going to get rid of the button, and I can do that, but then what do I need to do? No. What did the button do for me? Why was the button necessary initially? It told the basically it told it to change the value that it was looking for. Yeah, it, it did. More generically, what did the button do? Sent the form to the server to be processed. Alright? You're right, because that's what did happen, but that wouldn't have happened if it didn't go to the server. And if I just leave it like this, I can change the value of the drop-down to my heart's content, and it's not going to change the leads. Why? Because it never makes it back to the server to substitute in the new value of the drop-down. So, what do I need to do? I need to make sure that when I change it, it posts to the server, in other words, I need to enable auto postback. Auto postback means when the value of the dropdown changes, treat that as a submission to submit to the database. So now if I go and do this, without having to click a button, it will go and retrieve the new one. All right. Questions about any of this? It's important that you sort of understand in concept what I was showing up there about why there's two different data sources. Why I changed the data source instead of the grid view when I added the capability of selecting by sport. All right. And why I set up the drop down the way that I did. We'll get plenty of practice on this. You know, we'll go over more examples of this and we'll expand this. All right. Any comments? I have no comments other than to say, please have fun as you continue to work on your assignment.